Hi everyone, it's Di here from My Enchanted Journals. Thought I'd do a new intro for December. How is everybody? Welcome to Defemerimba. It's Boxing Day and Buddy says hi. Hello, hello. Here we are on the wrong side of a turkey sandwich. Boy, this time of the year, hey? Start to lose track of what's happening and we've had the big day. All right, let's have a look today. 26th Boxing Day, Forgotten Snacks. Now, this is quite interesting because I started to think along the lines of, you know, snacks like crisps and or chips as we call them in Australia and sweets and things like that. And my grandma used to love a pear drop. Um, yeah, she loved those. And I started thinking along the lines of that and then, because I always think of my grandparents and my great-grandparents at this time of the year, I started to think, well, what about forgotten snacks as in recipes? So let me just take you out a bit and you can have a look at this. This is my great-grandmother's recipe book. And when I open it up, these are my grandma's recipes. But this one here says Granny Richardson's Currant Loaf. Now... My great granny was born in 1897 and if it was her granny, well that means it's about 1850. So this is a really, really old recipe. I'm not saying that was written then, but this is a really old recipe. So it got me thinking about that and the little book starting to fall apart as you can see, but it's treasured. I really love this little old book. It's not full up but it's got loads and loads of little recipes that she's written out. Absolutely gorgeous. But yes, I do love that. And you know, um, just look at it, like two pounds of flour, half a pound of butter, you know, a pound of raisins, half a pound of mixed peel. I mean, it would have been an absolutely huge cake. I don't know, it would have lasted them. I don't know how long, but yeah. And a little piece has come off the edge of here I just noticed this morning so I'm going to use that in my prompt today use that as well all right so you see here these are my grandma's recipes beautiful writing I mean look at that beautiful and what she used to do is write everything on the back of old envelopes because they came through the war and you know things were scarce so treacle tart that was another favorite oh my goodness now this is the the instructions but I don't have the recipe I don't know what happened to that that's my mum's writing um, yeah and another envelope raspberry flan things she's cut out of um, newspapers glazing your ham 1975 so she's written so what she would have done is had the calendar um, used it and then kept the pieces of paper to write um, recipes on Cornish pasties Cake brand chocolate recipes. I just love seeing her writing. It just brings back so many memories. She was such a beautiful woman. 1976, same thing. Chocolate cake. She loved her chocolate, this woman. Must be where I get it from. Chocolate mold, meringue baskets. You get the idea. Summer quiche. All on the backs of old envelopes. Renee shortbread, fish fillets, egg, sa egg savouries. Oh my goodness, she used to love these things. You know, where they take the middle out of the egg and then they pipe it back in and put paprika on it at the last minute. Oh, so funny. She was kind of known for it. Scones, 1971, this one is. Looks like they like the same calendar. It looks like it was ripped off every year. Uh, plain slab cake, a punch. Must be a Christmas punch, again on the back of an envelope. These are all old bits of paper. Fluffy topping, mm, sounds nice. County gingerbread, now I used to love this as a kid. Oh my goodness, it's so moist and just yummy. I think even my mum used to make it when I was little and yeah, didn't used to last long. All right, but here we are at the recipe that I'm going to use today. And this is called Moggy. Now let me bring you down and I'll take a little minute so that you can screenshot that if you like. But it's an old Yorkshire recipe now. My 
folks or my family are actually from Lancashire but this is a Yorkshire recipe so I guess they all went around but it's called Moggy and it's kind of like yeah, I don't know, like a cake, but quite dense, and it doesn't rise very much. It's probably about that thick. And she used to cook my grandma every Monday. So every Monday was cooking day. She'd make a moggy. She'd make um, a county gingerbread. She'd make a treacle tart, and so it went on. And she'd have that all for the week. So it didn't matter what time or when you went to visit, out came all the cake, you know, cups of tea, she was a brilliant entertainer. Um, yeah, always plenty of food at her house. And I think that was a carryover from the war as well because, you know, they went without. They didn't have sugar. They didn't have fruit in Great Britain. And, um, yeah, she always made sure afterwards that there was plenty of food in the house. So this is Moggy. And so that is what I'm going to base everything on today. I'm going to use that as my forgotten snack because we used to have it a lot. Now, this is my grandma. This was taken in 1971 in Florence. Now, she was younger than me here. She was 51. And you forget, you know, you, you know your grandparents as old people because you get older and that's when you remember them. But they were young and luscious and had lives and, you know, did things that we all do. But you forget that. And, um, yeah, that's a beautiful photograph of her with Florence in the background so I'm going to use that today too. I've decided I'm going to use up all my photo albums in my art because my children, this lady died, my grandma, when my eldest son was only six weeks old so he doesn't remember her and every generation after that doesn't remember her. They're just photographs in an album and what will happen is they'll get destroyed and I don't want that. I'd rather they get used in my art, so I'm going to use them. So I can't bear to use the original with her writing on it. So what I've done is done a photocopy on my super duper photocopier. It's come out really, really well, really clear. So this is the original and that's the copy. So not bad, not bad for art and I, backed it onto a recipe card as well so it's the same as what hers was on hers is yellowed over age but that's okay so we'll use that today we'll use the photograph and then I've also got this gorgeous page that Lee gave me and I'm going to use that as my page today so um, I'm not going to use a page out of my journal. I'm going to use this as my backing page. And then last but not least, I've got a piece of, you know, um, it's greaseproof paper and I've used it as the back behind inks and all sorts of things. So I'm going to use that because she would have used an exorbitant amount of greaseproof paper. And so I've got an idea what I'm going to do with the page. So let's get started. Okay, so what I thought I would do, well, what I did to start with was put my holes in and I've just put those in as well because that will be my page that sits in my book. So that's good. And what I thought I would do is make is back this with some of the greaseproof paper like this because what I want to do is cut a couple of slits into Lee's gorgeous page but it has to be done across here and here. And then what I thought I would do is slot my recipe in and my photo of my grandma in as well. So that it kind of sits like a little, I don't know, like, you know, like a letter rack. Remember the old letter racks? Yeah, so it kind of sits like that. All right, so that is my idea today. So let's see if I can execute that and have it look like like I think it does in my head. <laughs> All right. So I don't want it too perfect. And I don't want it going over there because I've already done the hole. So if I stick it going down there, I think that will be fine. And keeping in mind, so I need to do the, the slits first. All right, let's do that. Okay, let's make one, yeah, I'm thinking that the recipe card will go in the top one and have her photograph 
in the bottom one. So if I do the slit here, like that. I really had to cut that stuff. That's quite thick paper. But anyway, so change of plan. I'm going to have the card go in the top here like this. All right, on a bit of an angle, a bit like a notice board. And then I don't really want to hide my grandma, so I think she's going to go on the front here and have her flip open like this. So we can still see Lee's art. So I love that. I think that's a better idea. All right. So what I'm going to do is stick that paper on the back now. So let me remove all of this out the way. And I think I'm going to reinforce the back of that slit as well. You can see easier. Move these. All right, so let's reinforce just the edges here. Do you guys have favorite recipes that your grandparents left you or your grandma always used to make at special occasions or something like that? Let me know in the comments if you have the same kind of thing. I think every family does, but yeah, this was definitely one of our favorites. All right. Let's stick this on the back, my piece of paper that's going to become my pocket. And it'll also add interest to the back of this page as well. I really like the look of that though. So I think what I'll do is I'll make it about there. Take this down straight on that line. There we go. Yeah, I prefer that. That staining on that side, that's good. And then I need to cut it around about here. That's better. There needs to be a pocket that goes behind there so that when my card slots in, it doesn't disappear. All right. I think I'll use my stronger glue. Mod Podge. I'm liking this one. It's excellent. Yep, so it reaches to the edge of the pocket, so that's good. All right. All right, that's dry. Over we go. And so this will slot into there. And now it's a pocket at the back there. Like that. All right. And you can see it goes down behind here. All right, so we'll take it out for now. Let the back dry properly before we start fiddling around with it. And I need to add this, don't I? So I'm thinking down here, and I think I might get a bit more of Lee's um, fabric that she gave me. Oh, I know what I can use. Remember Lee gave me this? That would be quite nice down there. Look at that. I could use that. And that will be over the corner of my grandma's pick, like that. Oh, yeah. I think that will look nice. Oops, sorry. The light again. Yeah, I think that will look nice. All right, I'm going to use that flower that Lee sent me. Great. Good idea. All right, so this has got a flip. So I've got to now make a little hinge for that as well. So what will I use for the hinge? Let me think. Um, I've got some of this old fabric that I used when I had leftover paint and stuff. So I think a couple of hinges made out of that. They don't have to be very thick. So if I cut myself a piece of this fabric 
and they don't have to be very long either just to go on the back of the fabric on the back of the photo I mean all right let's move all this out the way so that I don't get glue over it and we'll bring back a piece of paper of some kind here now it's opening up from this side so the hinges have to go on here of hinges oh yeah if I don't put my pin back in here straight away the glue just dries up in the nozzle very very annoying okay it's coming out now all right that's enough for a hinge it's not like I'm trying to stick a big cover on or something. All right. Let's bring our... Now I might have it so that is on the back and comes around. I think that will be a better idea. So let's put the photo like that. Near the bottom, I guess. We've got all the different patinas coming through now. The stuff from the paper, the stuff um, on the hinges, which is old paint and things. So that looks pretty cool. And there. So that's done. And the hinge is done. Hinges go around the back. Pockets ready to go on the back. That's all dried. So now we just have to finish up and put our card in. And our flower, I'm thinking the flower looks better up there now. And then, look, Lee gave me this. And I'm thinking that would be nice over the side there. Like that. Maybe I could take a little bit off, but not a lot. Let's just go down here. I'm liking how this trails off on the corner here. That looks pretty good. I think it goes that way. And then that up like that. I think that looks good and have my little piece of the old recipe book in the middle. I'm wondering if it needs a little button on top of that as well. Now Lee did send me a button. Let's see if I can find it. In here. It's just a little. Oh, I know. She sent me a number one. Look. I could use that because my grandma was my number one. How about that? Yes. Let's do that. All right. So if I staple those together to start with, and that will hold them. And then if I glue this on and this, so maybe this this way, and then the number one over the top. Oh yeah, I really like that. I think that's lovely. Maybe I might just ink the edge of the number one. I'll just age it up a bit with my trusty ink. I'd forgotten about this little number one. Oh, been that many prompts, isn't there? Goodness me. I'm glad there's only 16 this year. I don't think I could have done more. What a year it's been. All right, let's get this stuck on. And then that's part of my great granny's recipe book, which is lovely to be able to have that included on there. And then we'll stick the number one on. I 
I always think of them this time of the year. I've also got a um, a decoration on my tree with my grandma and grandpa. I'll insert a photo for you here. And there you go. Beautiful people. All right, let's get this stuck on. Let's put a goodly piece of glue. Now, you know, this is going against everything that I was brought up to think about. Not to use photographs that, you know, they were for saving and we didn't, didn't want to use them and all that sort of stuff. So, no, I'm pulling them all out of the album and I am going to use them because, like I said, otherwise they'll just get put in a skip someday when I'm not here anymore. And I dread to think of that. So maybe if I use them in my art, it means that somebody else will start to see who these people were and maybe imagine their lives. They were wonderful. This, my grandma and grandpa were apart for four years during the war. Four long years, actually almost five years. They were apart and um, they sent the most beautiful love letters to each other. Uh, that's another thing. I've got a whole trunk full of those. And I was just thinking the other day, you know, really, I should use them in my art because, you know, the same thing's going to happen to them. All right. So there we go. Look at that. That's nice, isn't it? All right. Let's get our recipe card in behind my grandma with the moggy. Kind of has to go in straight, but that's okay. And there we have it. Look at that. So, Forgotten Snacks is my grandma's moggy today. <laughs> yep, liking that. So let's bring our folder back across. Oh, my journal. You guys, seriously, I've got two prompts to go. And look, I've got one page and it's just a chocker block. I'm having to hold it so that I can get this in. All right, that slots on there nicely. Let's do it up so that the page doesn't disappear. And there we have it, Forgotten Snacks. So let's cross off. Actually, I don't think I crossed off yesterday either. So let's do that right now. I'll try and move you so that my light isn't in your way. There. All right. I found my pen again. Yes, so I didn't do yesterday, so friendship bracelet. That was me explaining all about my bracelet from school. And then forgotten snacks today. So Boxing Day is done. Don't eat too much turkey. All right, and we'll see you back tomorrow for spaghetti box window. I haven't got a clue what I'm doing for that. Spaghetti box window. Well, I'll have to think about it, won't I? whilst I'm eating yet another turkey sandwich, probably. Thank you very much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Sharing my memories with you and letting you see what I'm making. I'm really glad and happy with how that turned out today. All right, thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.